Lord. What wonderful talent we have in our church. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to assure everyone I am aware of what time it is. <laughs> I know there's, I saw a few like myself are wondering, wow, it's getting kind of late. And we will get done on time, okay? <laughs> Just want to set everyone's heart at ease today. I know that uh, a lot of us have plans and things we need to get to, and we understand that. Has anyone ever had a plan that totally bombed? Anyone want to be honest with me? Yeah. If your hand's not up, you're either really lucky or a liar. We'll leave it to the Lord and you to decide which. But we all pretty much have plans at bomb, right? Sometimes our greatest plans, we, we strategize and we think and we plan and it just comes totally unraveled, right? Despite all the hard work and the energy and the details that we try to attend to, uh, things have a way of getting derailed, don't they, right? And uh, th- they just, there's just sometimes things you don't think of, you couldn't have thought of, or maybe you should have, but for whatever reason, you didn't. And um, I have kind of a, a amusing video we're going to watch. Um, are we able to do that, guys? All right, we, we'll see. And um, th- this uh, took place in Ireland, and um, some fellas are uh, trying to go camping. I mean, what's so wrong with that, right? Not a hard, hard thing to do. Got to get the trailer pulled out uh, to go camping, and well... Unfortunately, things don't quite go the way they plan, so. I promise it gets more exciting. <laughs> the best things are worth waiting for, isn't that right? That's right. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, so close. We'll try one more time. If it doesn't work, we'll move on. That's right, you know. Good illustration. I planned it this way. Do we need to move on, guys? Move on. All right, we're moving on. Anyways, in the video, the guy tries to pull the thing on, and it's not working, so he comes up with this great plan. You just need more gas, so he steps on the gas, and the car takes off, and the trailer, at least the bottom of it, uh, moves, but the top of it stays still, and ev- it just tears apart, and it, it's hilarious. So um, I'm sorry it didn't work out, but you know, I, I've had a lot of my own plans fail, though. I really have. I've had a lot of things I've put together that just didn't work out, you know. There's nothing more humbling than putting, t- spending literally hours on a, a retreat or sometimes uh, just a single game. I, I've put hours in a planning a game and you have 15 teenagers waiting in anticipation for this great game you're supposed to deliver and you get going into this game and you have 15 faces staring at you <laughs> with this expression that says, you do realize this is completely lame, right? <laughs> just, we need to know that you know. <laughs> Yes, I know, but just work with me, right? And, and as I've done ministry longer, I've, I've come to realize that I need to constantly evaluate and reevaluate, even up through executing a plan and doing a game. And the game's not working the way it's supposed to. The video won't work the way it's supposed to. You know, and so you got to keep going, though, right? And you come up with, you change the plan. Uh, you alter the plan a little bit. You, you do something different uh, to keep going. And, and I've le- had to learn that, you know, unfortunately, the hard way, the hard way that um, I have to be willing to change my plan. I, I, I've learned that I, I can't hold too firmly to my ideas because it will almost never work out the way I thought it would. And so it's with a soft grip that I hold on to these plans, knowing um, that it's probably going to change a little bit, maybe even a lot, than, than how I thought it uh, should go. And I'm sure you found this to be true, too. Uh, those of the kids that are with us today or even students, you know, you may be excited to sign up for a summer baseball team or, or sports team or t-ball. You know, some of our kids are doing t-ball this year, you know, and you might be all excited to sign up, but because of some family things you got going on or some other conflicts, it, it doesn't work out. And you got all excited to do it, but then it doesn't happen. What a letdown. And, and it's important that we learn to hold our plans loosely and teach our kids to do that. Or maybe some of our students, you know, you have learned that uh, 
you sit with the same group of people and you, you sit with the same crowd, the same lunch table every day and it's kind of your routine and you walk in and, and that day you see a kid who's sitting all by themselves and not necessarily because they really want to, right? And, you, and, you, and something just sparks and you notice that and you have a decision to make in that moment. You know, do I go with my routine, my plan, what I always do, what's comfortable? Do I change my plan given something that's, that's happening right now, right? You know, adults, moms, dads, you, you've experienced this as well, I'm sure. Maybe you had the, who's ever had the perfect vacation planned? I mean, it's just going to be great. You know, we're going to have a great time. The family's going to bond. We're going we're gonna to enjoy time together, away from the distractions. And how many of you that have ever planned a family vacation, it went off just like that? Any hands? Any hands at all? Yeah, it, it hardly ever does, right? Things change. Uh, the kids start arguing, you know. Um, you find no matter how hard you try, you just can't break your kid away from their cell phone. It's like it's glued to their face, right? And, and you, you've tried all kinds of different things. And, and, and then as you get moving, maybe the car breaks down or the hotel loses your, uh, your reservation. Something happens, that just throws the whole vacation in disarray. Maybe you have a business or a career goal or you're looking for a promotion and looking for your business to expand maybe, but then something unexpected happens. A, a problem arises that you didn't account for. Unforeseen costs come up and, and now that goal, that promotion or that business venture that you're looking at just seems impossible, right? You just think, you know, I, I put all this work and planning and now it seems impossible. You know, as a result of experiencing these kind of frustrations, people often respond in, in different ways. There are some of us this morning that when, when plans change and you just get so frustrated and your solution to dealing with changing plans is to just simply not let them change. You just won't allow it, right? And you hold with like a death grip onto your plans and, and you control everything, right? You have to control all the people around you. You have to control all the, all the possible uh, different scenarios, all the variables. And, and you just, you've decided that if I can control everything, then nothing will change and it will go just how I want. And if something ever comes into the equation that is not part of your control. It just throws you into a dizzy, right? And, and things, it's just not good for you or anyone else near you. And you blow up. Others, though, others of us this morning, you know, they've experienced that same frustration of making plans and then it changes. And so you've just taken the kind of uh, attitude of, well, why plan then? You know, if you don't plan, you won't be disappointed. And so you just kind of fly by the seat of your pants and just take it as it comes, right? And, and you just, you just kind of live life that way, just one thing after another, not really planning ahead, not really thinking to the future. You just, you'll deal with it when it shows up, right? And the problem there, though, is whereas the, the control person soon realizes they can't control 100% of everything 100% of the time, the the person who just kind of takes it as it comes soon realizes that they're living from crisis to crisis and their life becomes full of drama because they simply lack the forethought to plan a little bit ahead and to prepare for the future. And so they just go from one crisis, one immediate emergency to the next. And, that's, and that gets tiring. But you know, we can choose to get frustrated, angry. We can choose to just not care and just give up. Or we can submit to the strategy of the Spirit. There's a strategy that the Spirit has for us. And in Club 252, our, that's the name of our kids' ministry, in Club 252, we have a saying about the choices we make. Don't we, kids? All the kids know where I'm going with this. We have a saying that we say about the kind of choices we need to make. So I need all the kids in the room that know this. Don't, don't leave me hanging here, please. Say it with me on the count of three as loud as you can. What do we need to do when we have a choice to make? One, two, three. I need to make the, the wise choice. That's right. 
But you know what? That's not just a cute saying, mom and dad. I need to remember that. I remind myself of that all the time. I need to make the wise choice. And moms and dads, say it with me out loud as loud as you can. Where do we go to find what the wise choice is? That's right. The Bible is our guide. You know, the Bible is a lot like a light. (laughs) Almost there. Wait for it. Wait for it. The Bible is a lot like a light. Because the Bible, if you're in darkness, you can't see where you're going. And you might fall and trip, but the Bible is like a light and it shines the way for us. Right? And it helps us to see if there's an obstacle nearby, if there's something we're going to trip on, if there's something that's going to, we're going to fall over the route that we need to take. And without a light, when we're just in darkness, aren't we? We need God's word to help us know what the wise choice is. Thank you, guys. We need God's word. The Bible makes it very clear that the Spirit of God has a strategy to help us with every area of our life. In our Bible story today, we're going to talk very quickly about a story about a man named Paul. Now, very quickly, I need a volunteer, a kid, volunteer. Jeremiah, come on up here, bud. Now, pop quiz for everybody here. Come right up on stage, Jeremiah. Let's give Jeremiah a hand. Thanks, Jeremiah, for helping out. Now, in the Bible, our story is in the book of Acts. So here's a pop quiz for everyone, okay? The book of Acts, is it in the Old or the New Testament? New New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the New Testament, and so that's where our story is. And in the book of Acts, it talks a lot about the early church, especially a certain individual by the name of Paul. So Jeremiah, you get to be our Paul today. How's that? Paul's a pretty cool guy, so you get, we got to put on our kind of Bible times robe here so we don't forget who you are and what you're doing. There we go. There's another arm there. All right, here's Paul. Now, Paul had been traveling all over the land. So Paul, come with me. And oh, before you go, hold on. You see, Paul had a job. He was a tent maker. Not only did he make tents, but he often lived in tents when he went from place to place. So Jeremiah, it's a little heavy, but here's your tent. And he was a missionary, and so he had to do a lot, a lot, a lot of traveling all over the place. And so he was constantly on the move. So here's your suitcase. And we're going to go. So come on, Paul. Here we go. We're going to go this way. And Paul would travel all over the world. He would travel all over the, the known world at that time. Uh, he spent quite a bit of his time. You coming? There you go. Uh, he, he spent quite a bit of time in a land called Syria. All right, sir. I know you weren't counting on this, but you're going to help me today. You hold that up just like that. There you go. It's on a pole, so you don't even have to stand. Okay. Here's Syria. Paul, you got to come to Syria. All right. There we go, Paul. Can everybody see me? Okay. I'm right here. Paul was in, spent quite a bit of time in a land known as Syria. You stay here, okay, Paul? And while Paul was in Syria, he traveled quite a bit. He saw great things, God moving in awesome ways. But there was another land that Paul really, really wanted to reach. And the name of this place is familiar, but it's not exactly what you're thinking of. He wanted to go to Asia. Now, Asia in Paul's time isn't Asia that we think of, not like China and and India. But Asia meant more like Western Turkey. Okay, mom and dad? So that's the part of the world we're talking about. And so Paul had this plan. He got his tent and his bag and his luggage. He had been doing great things all the way over there in Syria, and he said, hey, I'm going to go to Asia because people in Asia haven't heard about Jesus yet. They need Jesus. So Paul got a lot of stuff. Come on, Paul. And he worked his way, making his way toward Asia. Stop. Now, the Bible says something very interesting in Acts chapter 16. It's very curious. As Paul was making his plans and preparing to go to Asia, the Bible actually says... In Acts chapter 16, it says, as he was traveling, the Holy Spirit kept him from preaching the word in the province of Asia. 
Now, why would God do that? It says the Holy Spirit actually kept Paul from preaching the word in Asia when they came to the border of Mysia, which is right before entering into Asia. So, I mean, it's like he had almost gotten there by the time this happens. He tried to enter Mysia. They tried to enter Bithynia as well, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to, him and his companions. You see, Paul hit a roadblock. And it was as if the Holy Spirit was saying, do not enter. Jonathan, can you help me out? Could you hold that up for me? So Paul tries to enter Asia, and it's like the Spirit is saying, dude, you're just like your son, you know that? Yeah, or maybe he's like you. Ah, okay. And so it's like the Holy Spirit was saying, do not enter, cannot come this way. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was Paul, I'd be a little frustrated. Here, I'd made all these plans. I had this strategy. I mean, my goodness, you got your whole bag packed, right? He's ready to go. And the Holy Spirit says, no, stop. Don't enter here. I mean, the people of Asia need Jesus. What's the problem? He had come all the way from Syria. Thanks, you're doing a great job, by the way. He had come all the way from Syria when God said, do not enter here. But you know what? Oftentimes, God does give us messages as we plan and strategize. God communicates to us if we'll have an ear to listen. We'll have an ear to listen. Josh, why don't you come up and join your dad? Sometimes, have you ever been on a road on a highway and you're going maybe, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour and you come into a town and all of a sudden you got to slow down, right? You come into a town, you come into a speed trap. And the speed limit goes way down, and you got to slow it down. Sometimes the Lord is... <laughs> you too. Stand still. By the way, these signs were not stolen. They were obtained completely legally with permission. Thank you very much. Sometimes in life, we make plans, and we, we, we start doing things, and, and it's a good plan, but... If we'll listen and have ears to hear, the Lord will hear the Lord saying, slow down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just take it easy. You're speeding through this, and there's some things I need you to do different or hear, and you need to slow down. Just take it a little slower. And that's hard to do, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I don't like slow. I like fast. I signed up for that faster pastor race. I'm hoping to, hope, hopefully that'll work out and I'll get to do that because I like fast. <laughs> But sometimes we have to go slow because when you're going fast, sometimes you miss details and you miss things that you can't see when you're going fast. Other times, I need another volunteer. Joe, could you come on up? You can stand right there. Sometimes the Lord says, stop. Sometimes the Lord says, stop, and he has us pause because Maybe there's something that we don't know up ahead and we need to wait for a little bit. He's not saying don't enter. He's not saying you can't. He's just saying you need to pause for a minute. You need to stop for just a moment before you continue. I need one more volunteer. Brother Jim, you want to help us out? Come on up here. He's like, oh, why did I come here today? (laughs) Other times the Lord warns us, the way you're going is a dead end. There's nothing there for you. You need to turn around and go the other way. Don't proceed, because if you do, you're going to come to a dead end. It's not productive. It might be a great-looking street. It might have beautiful flowers along the side. There might be some great scenery along the way, but in the end, it's not going to get you anywhere. It might be a very good choice, a very good plan, but it may not just be productive, right? And so God says it's a dead end. Thank you, guys. Can we give our helpers a hand? Paul, you stay here. Everybody else can have a seat. All right. So Paul comes to his do not enter sign. But you know what's great about Paul is he said, rather than get frustrated and upset, rather than, oh, we're, we're going to need Syria still. Syria needs to stay in the picture. Sorry. You're not off the hook yet. Good try. Rather, and so rather than get all upset and twisted out of shape and everything, you know what Paul does is he seeks the Lord for what God's plan is. Lord, what are you wanting to do? What's your change? 
They can't go to Asia. Just came from Syria. What next? And what's interesting is the Lord gave Paul, because he was discerning of the Spirit, gave him a strategy, something, another place to go. So Paul, join me here. We're going to go for another walk, all right? How are we doing? You're doing a great job, by the way, Paul. That's why I picked you. I knew you'd be perfect for this. And they went, and Paul began to wonder, what do I do? You can wait right there, Paul. Zach, you want to hold that for me? All right. And we're missing something. There we go. When I cue you, Zach, I want you to say this line real loud, okay? It's easy. You can do it. Picked a graduate because I knew he'd be up for the challenge. And so Paul is wondering, what do I do? And he's praying, and he receives this vision of a man standing. Go ahead and stand up for us. Standing, and he can tell the man is from Macedonia, which is in modern-day Greece, all right? And here he's on the border of, of Turkey and all the way in Greece, across the sea. Uh, he sees this vision of a man from Macedonia. And in his vision, this man is, is yelling at the top of his lungs, That's right. Come to Macedonia and help us. We need help. And Paul knew in that moment that was what he was to do. And so Paul went on his way, and uh, you, for you can just stay right here, but we'll pretend you're in Macedonia. And he went to Macedonia, and there in Macedonia, Paul saw amazing ministry take place. And he went to some very important cities that we read about later, like Philippi. Later on, he would write a letter to the church in Philippians. All right, these are the people he connected with. He was only in Philippi one time, but yet they were important enough to where he wrote an entire letter that's now in the Bible. He went to a, a town called Corinth and made some very strong connections. Later on, he would write letters to the church in Corinth called First and Second Corinthians. He actually wrote two letters. He, wrote, he went to an important city called Athens where he met with some of the philosophers of the day and, and ministered to them and, and saw many come to Christ. Paul had wonderful ministry while in Macedonia, but it wouldn't have happened if he wasn't obedient. Well, much time went later, in fact, three whole chapters later in the Bible and a whole lot of time, um, Paul finally feels released to go back to Asia. So we got to head back this way, bud. Ready? Here we go. More traveling. He did a lot of traveling. And so Paul made his way to Asia. Come on up here, bud. He made his way to Asia, specifically a city called Ephesus. And while he was in Ephesus, the Bible tells us something really cool, that he was able to secure a location in a place called the Hall of Tyrannus. It was a lecture hall, kind of like a classroom, basically. And people would come from all over to hear Paul teach. And they became disciples of Jesus as Paul taught them about the Lord, about, about being a missionary, and he shared his stories of traveling and relying on God and all the things God had done in his life. And here's what's amazing what happens in Acts chapter chapter 19, three chapters later, with a whole lot of adventure and different things in between. In verses 8 through 10, we read about this. And it's a small little phrase that I know I've missed over a lot until the Lord brought it to my attention recently. And what it says there is that while Paul was teaching in the hall of Tyrannus, and people were coming to be taught and discipled and, and to grow, it says, let me read, I, want you, I don't want you to miss this, let me read exactly what it says. It says in verse 10, this went on, the teaching, for two years, listen, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Paul's dream of reaching Asia came true, but he wasn't the one to reach it. It was through discipling and multiplying his influence and effectiveness by teaching others that they went, and listen, the entire province and region of Asia was reached Within two years, there wasn't anyone that hadn't heard about who Jesus was in those two years. That's amazing. But that wouldn't have happened if Paul said, Asia, don't go to Asia. What do you mean, Lord? Don't go to Asia. I, I made all these plans. I, I've strategized. This is what I got to do. And, and I, I'm just going to go. Forget it. I, I just need to go. Then I'm sure he would not have had the effectiveness that he had by going God's route. 
Not only that, but all the way back in Macedonia, Paul connected with a church called Philippi. Remember that one? The Bible tells us in, in his letter to the Philippians, we find out that the church in Philippi was actually one of the only churches, quite possibly the only church, to financially support Paul on a regular basis. He would have never received that support had he gone his route. Or what if he had never made a plan in the first place and he just thought, I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants. I don't need a plan. <coughs> have you ever had a car standing still and you try and turn the wheel? It's kind of difficult, isn't it, a little bit? Have you ever noticed that when you're driving, the wheel is a lot easier to steer, isn't it? It's a lot easier to steer a vehicle in motion and move those tires than it is when it's standing still because there's a lot more friction uh, on those tires when you're trying to turn the wheel and it's in a stationary position. There's a lot of friction on that rubber and cement. It doesn't want to turn. But when you're moving, you're kind of in a way already kind of going that direction, so the friction is much, much less. You see, I believe that had Paul not made plans to start moving and heading toward Asia, it would have been much more difficult to get Paul to go where he wanted him to be. God, you, the plans that Paul had were not wasted, but God used it. God put that desire in his heart to be in Asia for a reason. The timing and the route was just different than what Paul had anticipated. Can we give our Paul a great big hand? He did a really good job. Great job, bud. Oh, thank you. Don't want to forget that. You know, moms, dads, students, adults, kids, whether you're single or married, we all have times in life where plans don't go quite the way we want. But you see, as we learn from Paul's experience, there's a strategy of the Spirit that he has for our lives. But it starts with a plan. Uh, our friend helping me with the Syrian sign, would you just turn that around so everyone can see the other side of it? You see, we, it starts with man's ideas. God uses our ideas. I mean, I've often asked myself this question, why didn't God, just, and skip the whole, like, on his way to Asia and then over to Macedonia, why didn't God just send him from Syria to Macedonia. That would have been a whole lot simpler. Would have saved a lot of time, a lot of energy, probably even cost. But you know, I think God enjoys using us. And God's given us a brain to use. He's given us the reasoning and thinking and, and skills of the mind. He's given us these brains that we have. And he wants us to use them. In fact, Proverbs tells us over and over the importance of seeking wisdom. Go after wisdom. Chase wisdom. Never does it say, wait for wisdom to fall in your lap. It says, you got to do something. You have to go after it and get a hold of wisdom. And so I believe that as we begin prayerfully to ask the Lord, what would you have me to do, and begin to put a plan together, God will use that plan. He may not keep that plan just the way it is, but I believe God will use that plan as a launch pad for what else he wants to do. Because you see, as we make our plans, there, Zach, if you want to turn your sign around for us, we connect with God's plan. After we make our plans, and it's not just us in our own mind, but it's through prayerful consideration. Let me make that really clear. We need to be praying before, during, and after this entire process when we have plans we need to make. But then we connect with God's plan and we allow our plans to change. We hold them loosely in our hands so that God can do whatever he wants to do, whether it's to change, alter, uh, completely modify, completely remodel that plan, whatever it might be. And it's not that the things that we had thought up beforehand were wasted, but I believe God will use that and weave it into what he's wanting to do. Because when we follow God's plan, when we start with you know, our plans and use the, the abilities that God has given us to seek wisdom and seek advice and, and begin to strategize, and then we connect with what God, the Holy Spirit and, and allow ourselves to be flexible and let Him change, you know what happens is we receive supernatural results. Paul experienced supernatural outcomes because he was sensitive to the Spirit and he followed 
the strategy of the Spirit. He followed that strategy. So what about you? Are you following the strategy of the Spirit or depending on your own wits to accomplish what you need to do? Have you gotten stuck at man's ideas? And maybe you've camped there in, in Syria and you haven't gotten past that. You haven't gotten past man's, your own thoughts and you haven't invited the Lord to be a part of what it is you're wanting to do. And you have, maybe you're holding so tightly to that plan that started out as a God idea, but you're holding so tightly to it, you won't allow the Lord to change or alter it at all. This requires incredible discernment. Because the strategy of the Spirit, although it starts with, I believe, man's ideas through prayer, it needs to connect with God's ideas. And as we connect with God's ideas, the strategy of the Spirit becomes more defined and more precise Things begin to come together so that we end up with the strategy of the Spirit with supernatural results. What's your plan for raising your kids? Hmm? What's your plan? Do you have a strategy? Is that strategy so strict and narrow that there's no room for change? Or is it so loose and jello that there's really no structure and really no plan. You're just hoping it works out somehow. What's your plan for pursuing your dreams and your goals? What's your plan for making a difference in the world around you? The greatest application of what we're talking about today comes with making a difference in your world, in the world at large around the globe. God wants to help you do big things for him. He wants to see supernatural results in your life. But it requires that we follow a strategy of the Spirit. That we not be afraid to begin planning and strategizing. That we don't fear beginning that process because we're not sure where it will end up. But we begin. And as we're beginning, before and during and after, we invite the Lord to give us His ideas and to mold and shape and change that idea. And do we have an expectancy for supernatural outcomes. Melissa, would you come and lead us? As a church, God is wanting us to corporately pool our resources and our abilities and our uniqueness. He wants us to work together to make a difference on the lakeshore as well as the world around us. You received a little flyer like this in your bulletin. We have six different outreaches of different types, everything from a week-long ministry trip coming up very quickly, actually, working with Love Incorporated, making a difference right here in Grand Haven. We're doing a feeding truck, a, food America, uh, a Feed America truck, rather. We're going to be giving away sidewalk chalk during the Coast Guard Parade to uh, just show our community we love them. We're not going to be preaching or sharing the gospel. We just want to say we are here for you and we love you. And there's a lot of other ideas, things that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a, a kids' VBS called Mega Sports Camp. I'm so excited. And we're believing for many, many kids to come to Christ through this. These, all six of these are things you could do to be, get involved. You see, our church has put together a plan and a strategy. In fact, it's, it's stated very explicitly in our mission statement. We say that our mission is to be a spirit-filled church committed to glorifying God by connecting the people of the lakeshore with God, with each other, and with the world. That's, who, that's what we're about. That's our mission. And we kind of have this vision, this, this concept of who we are and who God wants us to be, where we're going. Our vision says this. Our vision is to be a healthy, multiplying church known for making an impact in our community and the world. And so we've put together, we've sat as a board and as a staff, Pastor Ben and I, we've strat made a strategy this summer for how we can make a difference in our world. We'd like you to be a part of it. But you know what? As we've prayed about what God would have us to do and we began to make plans, we're continually staying open to the leading of the Spirit. And you know what? These plans probably will change. I'm betting on it. 
it's not going to go just how we plan. But you know what? We're open to what God wants us to do. We're open to his leading, and we're believing for supernatural results. Would you be a part with us this summer? I'd like to ask you to take a moment to maybe check some of these that you are interested in being a part of. We're not asking you to sign on the dotted line. We're not asking you to commit at this point, but just to say, I have a heart to want to get involved in that. Would you take a moment to do that and write your name at the top here and say, I'll, I'd like to know more about this or, or, or I, I'm interested in this. Just place a check mark to those as a way of saying, Lord, I want to be involved. I realize you need to talk with a, as a family and as a, with your spouse and check your family calendars. So we're not asking you to commit to this at this point, but just to say, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing. There's another part, just as a side note, if we have these great t-shirts. Don't these look good? That's a cool shirt. And we're going to use this as a way of showing our unity through all of these outreaches, a way of showing that we're a body of Christ, we're a unit. And that you can order one of these, and you can place this bottom half, you can fill that out if you want and, and do that. We're going to take a moment to pray. And one last time, I would just like to ask, what's your strategy for making a difference in your family, in your workplace? Students, what's your plan? How are you going to make a difference in your college campus? How are you going to make a, leave a mark for Christ on your high school, your middle school, your elementary school campus? What's your plan? You may want to get mom and dad to help you think through what you could do. God wants to use your uniqueness and who you are to make a difference. Your parents can help you with that. As you come up with a plan, stay open to God's ideas and believe and pray for supernatural results. Amen? Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for leading and directing us. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, that you would help us to see supernatural results, Lord, in our careers, in our business, in our families, in our homes, in our marriages, Lord, that we would see supernatural results, oh God. The timing may not happen the way we had hoped. Lord, it may not unfold the way we see it right now. But God, we invite you to be part of what you're putting in our heart, the plans that you help us form. And we invite you to lead us, to guide us, so that we can see supernatural results, so that we can make a difference through the strategy of the Spirit. Out those doors is your mission field.